like flowers, a little bit reddish. Uh, and the antheridia, or the male gamete-producing structures, are born on the top of these uh, saucer-shaped uh, structures. So we're not going to uh, spend a lot of time talking about the liverwort life cycle. We'll spend a lot more time talking about the uh, moss life cycle because you're much more likely to encounter a moss than you are to encounter a liverwort. But uh, briefly, I can show you uh, that the uh, spores can reproduce by mitosis. They can divide by mitosis to form a dichotomously branching phallus that might have gemma cups on them uh, and produce antheridiophores or archegoniophores. Uh, the antheridiophores have uh, the antheridia, where the sperm are produced in those saucer-like structures. The archegoniophores are those little miniature palm trees that produce the archegonia underneath the lobes. Uh, and sperm, when it's transferred through water, can uh, reach the eggs within the archegonia, producing a zygote. Uh, that zygote will divide by mitosis to form an embryo. Uh, and the embryo will eventually produce the sporophyte, which is within this, uh, which is this capsule here. So all of this sporophyte tissue here is diploid. And you can see it's attached to, still attached to the archegonium, uh, by the foot and the stalk or the seta on the capsule is very short. So all of this sporophyte is pretty much microscopic. You're not going to really see this unless you have a nice microscope. Uh, this brings us to our third phylum of non-vascular plants. These are the true mosses. They are your bryophytes. Uh, bryophytes, like all non-vascular plants, are gametophyte dominant. So when you see a moss, most of the time what you're looking at is the gametophyte, or the gamete-producing plant. Uh, they, those gametophytes start off as myospores, the products of meiosis. So we know that they've got to be haploid, right, because they were produced by meiosis. Uh, when they start growing, they form a structure called a protonema, which is a little green thread-like stru stru structure. Uh, protonema means first thread. Uh, that first thread will develop into something that looks kind of like a leafy shoot and have little root-like looking things. So these leafy shoots do not truly have leaves. Leaves require vascular tissue. So these things are not truly leaves. Uh, and they also produce these things that are like roots, but not truly roots, because true roots have vascular tissue. So these structures are called rhizoids. They do help anchor the plant to the ground, but they do not conduct water. Uh, and just like we saw in our liverworts, they produce antheridia, which are the male gamete producing structures. Around the antheridia, they have some appendages uh, that make it sort of cup-like to collect water. And it's called a splash cup because the splash cup can uh, collect that water, which then, when raindrops might fall, uh, will transfer that sperm to other moss plants in the area, the female moss plants, and achieve fertilization. Uh, so the antheridia produce the sperm. Uh, the sperm are flagellated to help them swim. Uh, the archegonia are the female gamete producing structures. Uh, the archegonia produce eggs. Uh, and then when fertilization has occurred is the beginning of the sporophyte generation, the diploid part of the life cycle. And in mosses, uh, they also have a capsule, like we saw in the liverworts. Uh, but usually they have a much more elongated uh, structure that looks like a stem, but it's not truly a stem, doesn't have vascular tissue. Uh, and we call that structure a seta. 
And the sporophytes of mosses, I think, kind of look like a periscope on a submarine. Uh, they're reminiscent of that. Uh, but the sporophyte is totally dependent on the female gametophyte. Uh, it gets its nutrition via a placenta, sort of like uh, placental mammals do. And some sporophyte, uh, sorry, gametophyte tissue remains covering the sporophyte on a structure called a calyptra. It's kind of like a little hat that stays over the capsule. Uh, the capsule often will have a lid-like structure called an operculum. The operculum covers an opening called a peristome. Uh, peristome literally means around the mouth. Uh, and the peristome may have structures like teeth they can aid in dispersal of the spores uh, using hygroscopic teeth. Hygroscopic means changing shape in response to humidity or moisture. Uh, and the peristome teeth may change their shape in order to sort of waft the spores out of the capsule. So all these words are just words unless we see some pictures to go with them. Uh, this is too zoomed out, but you can see there's an awful lot of moss uh, covering these concrete concrete bricks here. And here you can see some more details. This is a uh, black moss that uh, grows here in Alabama. Spends most of its life completely dried out until it gets uh, rained on and then it can very quickly rehydrate and uh, tr try to complete its life cycle. Here's some other mosses mixed in with lichens. Uh, this here is an example of a capsule so this is the sporophyte of a moss on a seda, that not really stem-like stem. And here's the operculum, or the lid. So a capsule kind of looks like a cookie jar uh, with a lid on it in many cases. These are uh, male gametophytes that have these splash cups. You can see they're arranged in this way that they uh, might collect water to achieve sperm transfer. And here we have a cartoon, an image from your text, showing the complete life cycle of a bryophyte. And this is something that, uh, let's just say, it's very important for you to understand what's happening in this diagram. And I would recommend, after looking at this for a while, maybe you should try and draw it on your own. So let's start with the spores. Uh, the spores are myospores. They are the products of meiosis. Uh, so they are haploid. They can start growing by mitosis to form protonemata, which is what more than one protonema is called. And you can see here they've got bud in quotation marks. Again, bud is something that you only really truly see in vascular plants, uh, but that Protonema may develop into a male gametophyte or male gamete producing plant or a female gametophyte or gamete producing plant. Uh, the male gametophytes have antheridia, which is where sperm are produced. The female gametophytes produce archegonia, where eggs are produced at the base of these archegonia. When water is around, the sperm can be transferred, they can swim through the water to find an egg and achieve fertilization inside the archegonium. So when fertilization occurs, we get a zygote. So you can see that that blue egg has turned into a uh, liver-colored zygote within the archegonium, which is where it's going to develop. Uh, it's going to divide by mitosis to form an embryo. That embryo is going to start to elongate, uh, form that young sporophyte. That young sporophyte uh, eventually is going to look something like this, kind of like that periscope-like structure that I mentioned, uh, with a stalk called a seta, and the capsule, which is where the spores are produced, uh, within this structure that is also called a sporangium. Uh, the foot is at the base of the... Uh, gamete of the sporophytes. And then within that capsule is where meiosis occurs. So here's the capsule. Here is the 
uh, operculum, that lid-like structure that can pop off. And here you can see uh, a peristome that has these teeth that may move in response to changes in humidity to help transfer, get the, get the spores out of the capsule and dispersed. So what we don't see in here are the calyptra. So the calyptra is a structure that many mosses have which uh, develops from the top of the archegonium. So the top of the archegonium can uh, tear away from the uh, rest of the archegonium. And we end up getting something that looks like this. Uh, you can see these uh, capsules have these accessory structures on top of them there. It makes them look like they're wearing little hats on top of their opercula. So here is one that's lost its hat, but it still has its operculum on top of it there. Um, so this operculum is made up of diploid cells. This capsule is made of diploid cells. The ceta is made of diploid cells. All this stuff down here, these female gametophytes are all haploid. And the calyptra, because it's derived from the female gametophyte, is also haploid. Okay. So the next great leap forward in terms of plant evolution is vascular tissue. And that's where we'll pick up in the next video.